Okay, Olga, um, you uh, are one of a cohort of international companies that have come to the Web Summit this year. Uh, Talkbits is, is your company. It's not your first company, though. Is, is, it, is it right in saying it's your second startup? Yes, this is the second company I'm actually working with. And it's, it's exciting being again in a startup business when we started six months ago. So now we're presenting our alpha today here. And uh, it's amazing seeing product growing from zero to, to the exit again. So you sold your first company to Yandex. What was Yandex is the big uh, Russian search engine. Um, you sold your first company to Yandex. What was the first company about? And then we'll, we'll talk briefly about Talkbits in a second. So the first company, uh, which is now a part of Yandex, um, is called SPB Software. So what they were doing, we're doing user interfaces for such device manufacturers as Toshiba, Fujitsu, Huawei, Sony Ericsson, ZT, etc. So it was. Um, like a HTC Sans team in terms of uh, UI design, but for any other device manufacturers out there. So we were pretty much B2C, B2B, you know, all about device manufacturers. Now we're more B2C with, with Talkbits. So, so Talkbits has raised, uh, I'm right in saying it just has raised funding recently, and uh, it's more of a B2C play, so I, I, Talkbits, uh, what caught my, my attention was when you said it was like social walkie-talkie, so if you can just explain uh, the funding and, and what Talkbits uh, strives to do. Sure, sure. So social walkie-talkie is an interesting way to explain it. So what we do is a walkie-talkie technology. You talk to people in specific proximity, um, and usually you don't know them, actually. You meet them around you, so you discover the place around you. You ask them about something. You join a conversation. Um, a lot of people, like sitting in a car, they're asking like, how to get from place one to place B. Um, I'm in a traffic jam. What should I do? Then they try to join a local community and they say, let's go together and for a beer, for example, in local pub in Dublin, as you know, yeah. And uh, they really try to, to make this community for voice because a lot of use cases, um, which are not covered right now, come from voice. Like you're driving, maybe you have a kid and you're playing with a kid in the yard, but you still want to, to talk to the people around you. So it's actually, uh, when, I, when I was a kid, I had a walkie talkie and I pressed a button and I talked. Yes. Is it, is it like that? Actually, the funny thing is, we just opened Alpha yesterday night, and we had one beta tester. He is from Helsinki, but it's so funny. He used to have the same walkie-talkie, and he keeps saying over after every single message. So he says, like, hi, I'm there. Um, let's go for lunch. Over. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, yeah. It's the same. So you press the button, and it's right away um, in the web, so you, people can hear that. Um, of course, you can say either it's a private message or a public message, so I want to talk to you personally. Um, it's one thing. If I want to speak to the community, it's another thing, of course. And is it striving to be like its own social network, or does it integrate with things like maybe Twitter or Facebook? Exactly. So we try to integrate it as much as possible because um, voice content, and it's interesting how voice is actually used by also such companies as Facebook, for example. We definitely will do integration with Facebook. Uh, and see how desktop users on Facebook use our app, but it'll, like not the near future. We need still to, to work on a mobile client. Uh, now you uh, you're from Saint Petersburg. Uh, you worked for Yandex in Moscow, and now you live in uh, Zurich. Uh, how would you, you? That's put essentially uh, crossing Europe. Uh, how would you describe the European um, startup scene, and, and what things need to be improved for for startups across Europe? You know, if you take like this. Places like St. Petersburg, then you mentioned Moscow. I lived in Austria, it's a completely different thing. And then Zurich. It's, there is no such thing like I can say this is the startup community in Europe. Definitely startup community in the country. Because um, even Russia, like Moscow and St. Petersburg, different startup communities. St. Petersburg is more B2B, more technical. Moscow is more about e commerce. Well, Zurich, they have a lot of investors, great companies but not that many good exits. We need really good exits in, in Switzerland and show that we actually not only have any good university there and great investors, but also that we have good products there. In Austria, like the funny thing was, my Austrian friends will kill me for that, but a friend of mine once told me, you know, Austria has great community of startups and great community of investors, and they never meet each other. So that's the thing. They're working like working really together to build this community. We already have great universities, we already have tolerance in the country, so people really understand different cultures, different languages. Now we need somehow to use this experience and to bring products. This is the only thing that really every single city I lived in, 
um, needs products, needs really great showcases. Like here, for example, I mentioned to you, there are two Russian startups, though the country is so big. There are three Swiss startups only. I think there are only two Austrian or something like that. So not that many great products out there. Though organizers done a great job with collecting all these companies in one place.